Hello, this is How To Bob, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a, an aluminum melting furnace out of a propane tank. So we've got our propane tank here, and we need to take the valve off. So I put a steel bar in between the top piece here, and then stand on it, and then I get a big pair of channel locks and grab the valve. You want to make sure absolutely sure that this tank is empty before you start this process and I'm just going to loosen up the valve here okay once I've removed my valve I'm going to go ahead and fill the tank with water just to be safe and clean it out so then I'm going to empty my tank and then I'm going to pick a spot towards the top of the tank and use my die grinder or side grinder or what have you and just grind around the top of it cutting all the way through the tank it'll take some time to grind through it but a little bit of patience and you'll have a nice straight cut I drew a line around the top edge of the tank so that it gives me a little guide to grind all the way around Okay, now that I've got my tank cut, I'm going to use these concrete forming tubes and I want to cut them down so that one piece is slightly taller than the tank that I just cut. And I'm going to get a paper plate and tape that onto the top of my concrete forming tube. And I want to make sure it's taped on pretty good because I don't want any leakage when I'm making my form. Then once I get the edges all taped down, what I'm going to do is go around the whole perimeter with some duct tape just to make sure. Okay, now that I have my form ready, I can go ahead and make my mix. And I'm going to use a little bit of concrete, some plaster, and some sand. So I've got my bucket ready and i got water in it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the plaster. Use about half of this to half of the sand and then throw a little bit of concrete in there's not an exact mix but I found just adding a little bit of concrete makes it a little stronger and it lasts a little longer the sand will absorb the heat or handle the heat while the plaster will harden uh, the mixture so I'm going to go ahead and just mix that up real good then I'm going to add a little bit of concrete to the mix just to help bind the mixture together and I want this to be this part of it to be fairly thick because this is going to be my base at the bottom of the tank. So once I get done mixing, I'll make sure it's fairly thick. And then after I get my base made, I'll thin it out a little bit. But right now, this is about how thick I want it to be. And I'll just coat the bottom of my tank with this thicker mix here. I want to take my trowel and I'll just smear it around and make sure it's kind of flat. And then I'm going to take my mixture and add more water to it to make it thinner. Now I can take my form that I made out of the concrete forming tube and I want to put that right in the middle of my tank resting on the filler material and I can press it down make sure that the bottom is pressed all the way down. And once I get that all pressed down and centered I take my thinner mix and I pour it around between the tank and the form go around a couple times filling it in and you might have to readjust the form a little bit here and there okay once I get my form all the way full I want to shake my tank just to get all the air bubbles out you can do that by kicking it and then you'll want to also start to clean off the top before it starts to harden and you can wipe down around the edges so you'll have a nice clean edge once it dries and if you want to vibrate it some more once you get it kind of cleaned up a little bit, you can always use a uh, vibrating sander and run that around the outside. You want to wait a couple days for this to harden up and then remove the form. And now I'm going to drill a hole. And I'm going to drill a hole down towards the bottom. And once I get punctured through the outer casing of the steel here, I'm going to start to angle it at a slight angle so that I can get a swirling motion once I inject the air you can see I'm facing it downward and over to the side now that way when I insert my air injection tube 
it'll cause a vortex in there. See how it goes in at a slight angle and slightly aimed in a downward position and that will cause it to get a vortex once I inject my air. So that's why we do it that way. So now I have the lid to the propane tank and what I'm going to do is make a cap for my for my furnace just to keep some of the heat in and I'm going to do that by drilling a hole in cutting around it. Then I'm going to take my grinder and clean off the edges. So now I'm going to make a crucible and I'm going to use an old fire extinguisher that's expired. So I just take the lid off once I've exhausted all of the inside. Just loosen it off. And once I get that off there, I can take out the stick and then I can dump out the rest of it. So now I've got my empty container and I'm going to take my grinder once again and same as I did with the propane tank and cut the desired length and I made it a little bit shorter than the depth of my furnace and then I took a rebar piece and bent it over and welded it on the side. You don't have to do that but I did that for just ease of grabbing it out of the furnace. So now that we're all set I'm going to go ahead and put some charcoal in here. I've already had a test run so I know that it all works. Um, basically what I do is put some charcoal at the bottom of the furnace, set the crucible on the charcoal, and then begin filling around the outside with charcoal until it is full. For my air injection, I'm going to be using a shop vac and run it in reverse, or use the exit port on my shop vac and use the hose. So I'm going to tape my hose to a piece of PVC, and you can see here that in short order it's eating aluminum cans relatively quick and it'll get quicker the hotter it gets and you'll have to keep feeding in more coal so I'm going to take the lid off and you can see there's all kinds of impurities inside so I'll go ahead and scoop those off and what I'm left with is a real nice liquid aluminum so I'm going to take that out and pour it into a steel can and I left the label on the outside of the can for the effect of it and then after a few hours you want to be careful but it'll cool down and I'll peel the aluminum can off and I'll be left with an aluminum nugget quite a big one so that's how you build an aluminum eating smelting furnace I'm how to Bob thanks for watching